Did you know that you can create GIFs right in PowerPoint and you can use them to create animated abstracts? How cool is that? So in this video, you're going to learn how to do that. It's super easy. And you're going to learn why academics and scientists should even want to do this to create GIFs and animated abstracts. So stay tuned. Just in case you're new to my channel, hello, I am Dr. Echo Rivera, and I work with academics, scientists, researchers, and evaluators to create engaging presentations. So welcome to my channel. We are all here trying to end death by PowerPoint together. Make sure you check out some of my free courses and resources that I have listed in the description below. All right, let's get started. So congratulations, you have a new publication or a new research or evaluation report or an upcoming conference presentation. Either way, you are awesome. <laughs> way to go. You have done something great and it's time to share it with your feedback or just the general public. <sighs> Wait, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you tell people about that? How do you get people to read your publication or your report? Or how do you get people to register for your conference or watch your webinar replay? I mean, there's a lot of things that we do as academics and scientists that it's kind of like, how do we even tell people about it? How do we get people to go there or to read the thing? A lot of academics and scientists will just do nothing <laughs> and hope that, you know, maybe a Google Scholar alert or just, you know, Google will send people to, you know, wherever that information is. Basically, a lot of academics and scientists kind of just like wait for the Google gods to send people their way. Does this sound like what you do a lot? <laughs> Well, the thing is, is that's just a really passive way to share your information with the world. You're, you're setting yourself up for no one really finding you or people finding you way too late, you know, a year after your conference presentation, for example. So, you know, people are realizing this. Luckily, we do have more people taking a more active role in letting people know about their work. So chances are, if you're watching this video, maybe that sounds like you. Maybe you are taking a more active approach. But what does that usually look like? Well, you probably send an email to your professional listserv. We see these all the time, you know, and they're usually very formal. Um, bullet pointed list, all text. <laughs> it's an abstract that was just copied and pasted, right? So it's just kind of this like wall of text. Or hey, maybe you are posting on social media right now. If so, good job. <laughs> Um, but still, I see a lot of tweets or posts that are all text. Or maybe if you're really fancy, you've taken maybe a science communication workshop. Uh, maybe you even have a press release, which is super awesome. Good job again. But again, you know, they mostly tend to be all text. So I've kind of been nudging you on something <laughs> that um, this is all steps in the right direction. Like these are definitely good things to do. They are very active, but there's still something missing in these more active approaches to share your information with the world. Can you guess what that is? Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> Could it possibly be visuals? <laughs> of course it is. With me, it's always about visuals. So yeah, a lot of times, even the more active approaches we take are lacking visuals, which is, you know, really unfortunate because visuals, I mean, they catch people's attention. We know this, that they are more effective at catching people's attention than text, especially a wall of text. And if done well, they are more likely to keep people engaged with your content or more likely to encourage them to take that action that you want to register, to download, to read, whatever it is. So do all those things like email your listserv, post on social media, but make sure you have a visual to go along with it. And again, people are moving in this direction. So you may have already heard the term visual abstract. And just in case you haven't, it's just sort of 
you know, a new thing that people are, you know, relatively new (laughs) thing that people are talking about where it's sort of you take your abstract for your paper or conference presentation or, you know, webinar, whatever, and you just you make it visual. So instead of being just literally 100 percent text in bullet points don't count as visuals, by the way, you know, you're doing things like adding an actual graph to your you know, little message, you're adding icons, you're using arrows and creating flow charts. There's things that you're doing to make it visual instead of a text abstract. So these are awesome. And you can create these in PowerPoint because PowerPoint is fabulous like that. (laughs) So yeah, um, you could definitely do that. And I actually have a link for you just to get you started on visual abstracts in case this is totally new, or maybe you've wanted to make them before, but you just didn't know how to get started. So I have a, a link for you down below. So again, excellent step in the right direction. But what I want to talk to you today about is going just like one more step forward, like leveling up just, you know, one more step because there is something you can do that's better than a visual abstract and it doesn't even take a ton of time. What I hope to convince you of in this video is that if you're going to go that extra step to create a visual abstract, first of all, that's great, but you can make it an animated abstract and it will just be even more effective and engaging. And don't panic (laughs) if you're like, nope, I don't have time for that. I promise you the reason why I'm making this video is because I wanna show you it's actually really fast and easy. And if you're already making a visual abstract, making it an animated abstract doesn't really take that much more time. And the reason is, is because what you're going to do is just make a GIF of your visual abstract. So a visual abstract is usually exported as an image. It's a PNG or a JPEG. And with just a few tweaks, all you have to do is, you know, edit your PowerPoint a little bit, then export that as a GIF and it becomes a magical animated abstract. It's super fancy and does not take a lot of time. Okay, so before we move on, I just want to say, hey, if you're still watching this video, you are awesome. And just in case you didn't know, hitting that like button, hitting subscribe, even, you know, choosing that bell for notifications really helps small channels like mine. So if you are enjoying this video so far, make sure you do those things. And also don't forget to check the description below because I have resources and free courses that, um, that you might be interested in. Maybe now you're asking, okay, but like, why do I need to do this? Like, why can't I just make a static image you know, a visual abstract and call it a day. You know, there's nothing wrong with a visual abstract. It's just what I really want to encourage you um, to think about is that GIFs or, you know, movies, basically, it's like a little mini movie, that they are just more effective and engaging and people will be more likely to share it and engage with it. So I could say that all day, but you know, let's actually see some proof, shall we? (laughs) So I actually did, I I wasn't even really experimenting. Um, It just turned into something I could look at after the fact. So earlier this summer, I did a free brown bag week and it was about how to create engaging and interactive webinars. And I created a static image as a agenda, as a like, hey, register for this brown bag, check out what we're going to talk about. So I created a static image, a PNG. But then I was like, hmm, I could turn this into an animated abstract. So I made a GIF. That's what you've been watching on the screen. And I already had the PNG. So I shared both. Okay, so I kind of have like, you know, a very informal experiment here about the different impact a PNG version and a GIF version of the same content actually had. So are you curious about what happened? I hope so, because I'm going to share some results with you. So um, I looked at my Twitter stats to see which one was more effective. And you get a bunch of different stats in Twitter. I don't know if you've ever looked into it, but one of them is impressions. So this is just like how many times people saw it. So people saw the static image 1,165 times. That's pretty good, I think. I don't know. (laughs) I guess it's all relative. So um, 
what about the GIF though? Okay. So then I looked at the GIF stats and people did see it at, there were at least 1,165 impressions. So it did at least as good, but it also did better. Okay. How much better do you think the GIF did compared to the static image? Do you think it was like double as effective or twice as effective? So about 2,200? Get kind of a number in your head. Because here's what happened. The GIF got 5,197 impressions. Whoa, that is like over, what, 4,000 <laughs> impressions? Again, same information, same link, literally the same image, but one was just an animated abstract and one was a visual abstract, a static image. Whoa. <laughs> okay, but what about actual engagements, right? I didn't want people to just see the image. I wanted people to actually click the link and register for the brown bag. So I looked at the engagement stat. And people engaged with the static image, the visual abstract, the PNG, whatever you want to call it. People engaged with that 51 times. That's okay. Um, you know, I'm kind of happy with that, I guess. So how did the GIF do? How did the animated abstract do? Well, we got at least 51 times, so it was at least as effective. But just like before, it was more effective. Okay, it was. Spoiler. <laughs> but how much more effective do you think it was? Again, get a number in your head. Like how many engagements do you think the GIF did compared to the static image? Okay, the answer is it got 343 engagements. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, that is, that's like, you know, almost 300 more engagements than the static image, the PNG same image. One's animated, one is not. Blows my mind. Okay. But again, engagements, engagements include a lot of things. Like it even includes just like clicking it and looking at it. So I wanted to dive in a little deeper because it's the actual clicks on that link that matter the most. Okay. Here's the final reveal. So people clicked on the link 13 times with the static version. To be honest, that feels really low to me. I am like, I want more clicks than that, okay? Because not everyone who clicks actually registers. So how did the GIF do in terms of actual clicks on the link? Once again, we have at least the same amount of clicks, okay? So at least as good, but we also have more clicks than that. <laughs> One last time, guess. Guess how many clicks do you think I got with the GIF version compared to the static version? Okay. You ready for the answer? Oh, 107. I mean, that is almost 100 more clicks with the GIF. I mean, look at that. I honestly, again, I didn't like start out doing this as an experiment. I was just like, eh, why not? What's the harm in sending out both? And it was only until I was making this video where I was like, hmm, maybe I can give people some numbers to sort of back up what I'm saying here, that visual abstracts are definitely good, okay? But man, if you could just take that one extra step and turn it into an animated abstract, look at the difference. 292 more general engagements, like overall engagements, 4,000 more impressions, and 94 more clicks on the actual link than the static version. I mean, <laughs> I was blown away by how much better the GIF version did, the animated abstract. And look, obviously this is not a real experiment or a real study. And yes, I know there are other factors to consider, like what hashtags I used and time of time of day and like all that stuff. And was it, you know, did an influencer retweet? Yes, I, I am fully aware that there are other things to consider. I am not trying to push this on you as like a real official study. But still, I mean, I was impressed with the stats here. And honestly, I've been using social media for a long time, a very, very long time. So I could just tell you that in my personal experience, GIFs get more engagement. So this also just sort of reinforces what I, I had already experienced. Okay. So maybe you're like, okay, I'm convinced. Yes. I need to be more proactive. I need to include a visual and ideally it will be an animated visual, an animated abstract. 
Yes, but now you're probably coming across the concern that this is going to take forever. So how long does something like this take? How long does it take to create an animated abstract? Honestly, it could take as little as five seconds. <laughs> it actually could be very, very fast. It kind of just depends on a few things. So let's go through that. So in this case, I already made the visual abstract and I did this in PowerPoint. It was pretty easy. It did not take me that long to do this. So the visual abstract was already done. The GIF version took a few seconds to put together because it's all done in PowerPoint and it's just you, you export it in a different way, basically. So if you take the time to design something nice at first, going from a static, just visual abstract to an animated one actually takes almost no noticeable time. Okay, because here's basically all you have to do. So the first thing you do is you like just design your slides, you design your, your image, your, your GIF, whatever it's going to be, you just like do it in PowerPoint. Okay. And what's cool about doing GIFs using PowerPoint is that whatever animations and slide transitions you use will be part of that GIF. That's what makes it unique to use PowerPoint to create your GIF. Okay. Then you go to file, you go to export, you click create an animated GIF, and then you specify how long you want the GIF to spend on each of your slides. And then you choose the quality. So, and that's going to impact the file size. So it's like, it's basically all happening here in the menus. Again, it takes like no time to actually create the GIF. And if you've ever used a third party um, app to create GIFs, you will appreciate how streamlined and easy this is, okay? So there are a few things that I wanna let you know that might be helpful as you start creating your own animated abstracts. Um, you can actually change the slide dimensions to like perfectly fit whatever social media your, the social media platform you're using says like, oh, if you want people to see the whole thing without clicking on it, it has to be, you know, these dimensions. You can change the slide dimensions to fit that. I don't. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm way too lazy for that. All right. And I feel like those change like every year. So I'm just like, I'm not going to bother keeping up with that. No, thank you. So I just leave it the normal widescreen 16 by nine slides that I use. And I literally just export them and it's been working fine. Maybe some people have to click to see it, but like, it's going fine. The other thing I do have to kind of warn you about is that your file sizes are going to be huge. Like if you notice that they're big, you're not doing anything wrong. It's it's not like you set it up incorrectly or anything. It's just probably because of the animations and transitions or just whatever PowerPoint is doing right now. The file sizes are huge. Like don't expect that you're going to be able to do the highest quality. I usually have to choose the one that's like I don't know, 480 resolution. I don't remember the number, but like I have to do like low quality or like medium quality most of the time. Like sometimes I can't even put GIFs on my website because it <laughs> exceeds that file limit, which is like, it's pretty high. So yeah, um, that is the one downside of using PowerPoint to create GIFs. Okay. And finally, <laughs> this process tends to go fast with like one big disclaimer. It goes fast if you already have slide design and data visualization skills. Those are critical to making this just go fast and m critical to making them actually engaging and effective. So for example, <laughs> if your slides currently look like this, which is like the standard academic delivery, I talk about the death by PowerPoint we're all trying to end. I would say don't bother turning that into a GIF. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not like trying to shame you or put you down. Not my style. I'm just saying this is not what we're talking about here. Um, so the first step, if your slides look like this, before you get too excited about GIFs, um, the first thing to work on would be your slide design skills and data visualization skills so that you can have beautiful and engaging GIFs, something a little bit more like this. And what's really nice is that these are 
presentation slides. So this is actually part of my presentation training course about data visualization and how to walk people through the data that you're sharing. So if you take training on how to do that, then you already do that for your presentation. And then it takes seriously, like five seconds to just turn this into a GIF. Maybe you have to add like a beginning slide or an end slide for the GIF that you're creating, but ultimately the design is done and it's in your presentation. You can also use it as a GIF for an animated abstract, you could also use it for a visual abstract, a static image. So basically my key point here is if you kind of invest in your slide design and data visualization skills first, all these kinds of cool things, these animated abstracts and visual abstracts and infographics, all that stuff becomes super easy and fast because you can usually just take what you did for your presentation, maybe make a few tweaks, change how you export it and it's done. Okay. So yeah, super awesome if it looks like this. Um, and yeah, I'm serious, like slide design skills apply to so much. And I want to emphasize PowerPoint really is amazing. So maybe you came into this video not really realizing that all of this can be done in PowerPoint. And that's what you're watching right now. This has all been a PowerPoint. It's not Adobe Premiere. It's not anything special. Like you've literally just been watching a PowerPoint. And if you would like to make PowerPoints like this, if you want to make engaging GIFs and data visualizations and all that good stuff. That's literally what I'm here for. I do professional development trainings and courses, and I also do design services for academics and scientists and researchers. So yeah, and I don't even stop at slides because again, you can use these slides for other things like animated abstracts and infographics, or it can go in your report. I mean, it all can work together. Okay, if you want a couple examples of actual <laughs> research GIFs made by people with slide design training, then check out the blog post that comes with the video. Two people who are in my course also made GIFs and we workshopped them together and they are really great examples of the type of GIFs that you can be making, especially if you have those existing slide design and data viz skills. And I highly recommend you check out these examples because one even mentioned that a policy maker saw their GIF on Twitter and reached out. I mean, that's like the ultimate goal, right? And it was because of a great looking, engaging GIF. So they work. <laughs> I also share a few tips on how to do more storytelling um, because you don't want to also create a GIF that's just like intro, method, results, discussion, blah. No, you don't want to do that either. So I give some tips in that blog post. And if you haven't taken professional development for your slide design skills yet, and then get started with my free course called Stellar Slides in Five, the link is in the description below. You know, there's just so many myths about effective presentations that I created a course to sort of help you start unlearning those. For example, have you heard that you should use as few slides as possible? or one slide per minute, that's probably one of the worst myths out there. That is just not true. And uh, if you believe that myth, definitely take that course because there's probably other myths that you're you're believing because they just get repeated. They're just they're told over and over again. It's not your fault. Um, but yeah, sort of case in point, you've seen over 50 slides in this video. So yeah, take my course. Okay, if you've watched this whole video, oh my goodness, you're fabulous. So please take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Make sure you check out those free courses below. And let's make sure we connect on social media. I am on Twitter and LinkedIn. Again, links are all below for those links. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.